Welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, I'm Marissa and I post creative journaling, memory keeping, and travel journaling videos, hoping to inspire you to document your memories and discover little moments of joy through this practice. Today, I wanted to journal about a fun foodie adventure my friend and I went on where we tried out two new places in one day. Get ready for lots of delicious details. First up, we went to Larry's Cafe and Bar for Sunday brunch. I've been wanting to try it for a while since I heard they have unique Filipino-inspired dishes. I got so excited when I saw Vegan Longanisa, a Filipino sausage on the menu. I ordered the Longanisa breakfast plate with eggs, garlic, rice, and tomatoes. The Longanisa was perfectly sweet and salty. The garlic rice was super flavorful and the fried eggs were cooked just how I liked them. It was such an amazing fusion brunch dish that made me really happy. Larry's has a laid-back atmosphere making it the ideal spot to unwind with friends over a delicious meal. After that big meal, we walk around for a bit before heading to St. Louis for a dessert and coffee pick-me-up. Stepping into the St. Louis Cafe felt like entering a cozy haven of desserts and aromatic coffee. We ordered a serving of churros to share and I got an iced Aussie coffee with vanilla ice cream. The chill drink was a delightful surprise. The combination of rich coffee flavors and creamy vanilla ice cream created a harmonious blend of sweetness and caffeine kick. The churros were so delightfully crispy on the outside while warm and doughy on the inside. Let's start by preparing the main supplies and tools we'll use to decorate this page. Here are the supplies that I plan to use. I like to have them ready on my journaling desk so that I won't get distracted looking for them in my stash during the journaling session. I may or may not use all of these items. First up, photos. I printed this small photos using the Maldive Collage app to arrange 9 images on one 4x6 inch sheet. This allows me to efficiently print lots of tiny memories in one go. I sent the files to an online printing service but you could also print at home if you have a printer. Next, I have a free ephemera piece I've collected that relate to this memory. Incorporating ephemera makes the page more personalized and adds character. Ephemera includes any small mementos from the actual experience, like ticket stops, brochures, napkins, etc. I like to gather free ephemera when I'm at restaurants, cafes, events, or traveling to use later in my journaling. These tangible pieces infuse nostalgia and preserve the authentic vibe. 
For this page, I'm using the logo napkin from St. Louis Cafe. So next time you dine out, keep an eye out for any great ephemera finds. Now that my photos and ephemera are prepped, I'm ready to decorate the page. I like to play around with the elements I've gathered and experiment with different layouts before committing to gluing anything down. I'll loosely move around the photos and ephemera pieces on the journal page to visualize how I want to arrange them. This allows me to try out a few different layouts before finalizing the design. Since we are creating a memory keeping page, the most important supplies for me are photos. Pictures capture those irreplaceable moments and emotions that transport you back to the experience. Having visual reminders of the sites, faces, and places associated with your memory is vital for memory keeping. Photographs act as windows into the past instantly igniting all the senses, the laughter, smells, tastes, and feelings rush back at a glance. For this page, I think I want to place the restaurant logo from the napkin on the lower right corner of the page, then place the photos above it. Initially, I was planning to include this cute memo pad ephemera, but I changed my mind because of lack of space. I want to be mindful of leaving enough negative space so it doesn't feel too cluttered. The logo will act as a nice branded anchor in the corner while the photos can take center stage above it. When laying out a journaling page, it's important to experiment with arrangements first as I am doing now. This allows you to visualize the spacing and balance of elements before committing to the composition. It's normal to modify the initial plan while working on a layout. Being adaptable and leaving out pieces that don't fit the final vision is key to creating a cohesive spread. I can always save the memo pad for another page. Once I have a layout I love, it will be time to start gluing. I like using this Scotch permanent glue stick to adhere papers such as the napkin logo and a 3M double-sided tape to adhere photos. For paper elements, the glue stick provides a nice even coat of adhesive. When sticking down photos, I cut small pieces of the double-sided tape and place them on the corners on the back of each photo. The tape allows the photos to stay firmly in place and prevents them from ripping the page if they are lifted. Next, I'll be adding the washi tape accents. I'll be using the washi tape color that matches the color scheme of the left page for visual cohesion across the whole spread. Since the left side has green and purple accents, I want to carry that color over to the right side as well. Using coordinating colors and repeating design elements creates consistency and flow between both pages. I'm adding this Shamil Garden washi tape strip at the bottom of the logo and a thin purple washi on the top of the logo to create a border. Washi tape is great for incorporating color without overpowering. By echoing the colors from page to page, it makes the two-page spread feel harmonious and connected. Next, I'll be using some food and coffee theme clear stamps to add little accents to the page. I'll be stamping this on the menu stamp on a purple sticky note since this complements the purple shades on the left page. Using corresponding colors creates visual unity.
also using stamp inks that match our overall color scheme, like this Versa Magic chalk ink in Perfect Petunia. For the border around the photos, I chose this tiny coffee bean stands from Sakura Lala, which tie into the cafe theme. I'm using brown ink to stamp them so they stand out against the photos. Strategically picking stamps and inks that enhance the color palette and motif helps the page feel cohesive. Tiny details like stamp images are a great way to inject creativity without overcrowding the layout. Now, I'm taking time to review my journal spread and see if there are any empty areas that need just a touch more for visual balance. I like to add all the decorations before moving on to the next phase, which is journaling or writing. Scanning the layout with a critical eye helps me identify any gaps or blank spaces that could use a small embellishment, stamp, washi tape, or sticker to finish off the design. Now that we've embellished our page, it's time to add the journaling text to complete the spread. I'm adding the name Larry's Bar and Cafe with a simple hand lettering style using this Staedtler fine liner pen in brown shade to make it stand out. Next, I'll use my Twispy Echo fountain pen in extra fine nib to write the rest of the journaling text describing our experience that day. I like using a fountain pen for the smooth, fluid writing it produces. When journaling, I briefly mention highlights like the atmosphere, who I was with, how the food tasted, and my emotions to help capture the memory. Finally, I'm using this Mide Liner Highlighter to trace over the important keywords like the specific dishes and drinks we ordered. Highlighting key details draws the eye while adding a pop of color. The combination of hand lettering, fountain pen, and highlighting creates visual interest in the text for a more engaging journaling style. And that wraps up my journaling of this experience. 
through documenting these moments, I've realized how much value there is in preserving memories, not just through photographs, but through journaling as well. It's like capturing a piece of time and emotion that you can revisit whenever you want. Let me know in the comment section below, what's your go-to breakfast order? Is it sweet or savory? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!